The Pat's rubber leg is a great stonefly imitation and is easily my favorite nymph pattern. Rarely will you not find it on my line as my lead fly when I am nymphing. You can fish these with a variety of weights. However, I almost always fish them at or near the bottom, so I like to fish them really heavy. If you do decide to weight yours, secure the lead by wrapping over it and creating a thread dam on either side of the lead. Make sure that when you're done, you end with your thread at the eye of the hook. To form the antenna and the tail, take a single strand of flex floss and fold it in half so the tips are roughly aligned. Measure about one shank in length for the antenna. However, don't make it perfect as we will trim them off at the end. Tie in the flex floss at the point that you measured. Wrap your thread back, making sure that it stays on top of the hook. Once you get to the lead, pull the flex floss tight to create a more even transition between the hook shank and the lead. Once your thread gets to the back of the lead, create another smooth transition by relaxing your grip on the floss. Cut the tail about 3 quarters the length of the shank. Again, don't worry about making it perfect as we will trim it at the end. The entire body is going to be made from chenille. Strip the end of the chenille down to the core and tie this in just in front of the tail. Once the chenille is secure, wrap your thread up to about the two-thirds point of the fly. Cut three pieces of flex floss about two inches long and roughly line them up. Lay them perpendicular to the hook at the point where we left our thread. Then take one diagonal wrap across the legs to hold them in place. Bring your thread up to the other side and take another diagonal wrap creating an X on top of the legs. At this point you can let go of the bobbin and use both hands to make any adjustments to the legs. You can continue to make X wraps across the legs until they are securely in place. As you do this, you should also be pulling tight enough that your legs splay out just a little bit from one another. Once your legs are securely in place, we can begin to create the body. Begin to take your first turn of chenille around the body. When you come up, place this turn of chenille behind the tail. After this first turn of chenille, readjust the floss so that it lays out on either side of the fly, then continue forward. Sometimes, after a couple of wraps, you will need to readjust everything. This is completely normal. Keep wrapping this chenille tightly until you reach the legs. If you look closely, you may notice that the legs naturally bend in different directions, if yours don't do this, then you need to pull a little bit tighter when you're tying in the legs. Pull the most rearward facing leg back and place a wrap between that leg and the other two. Then as you take the chenille over the top of the fly, repeat this step on the other side. As the chenille comes back to your side, find the natural gap between the next two legs and place another wrap between them. I like to hold on to and guide whatever piece of flex floss is currently being passed by the chenille. Take one final wrap in front of the front two legs, and then pause and make sure that you have two legs coming out the back, two that are roughly in the middle, and two legs that are facing forward. Once you are satisfied that your legs are positioned correctly, continue wrapping forward until the eye of the hook. Tie off your chenille on the side of the hook facing you with a few turns of thread. Then cut the chenille off as close as you can and take a few more wraps to secure the little bit of chenille remaining. Clean up the head by using two fingers to strip any fuzzy bits of chenille that are remaining. Pull the antenna back and whip finish in front of them. Now comes the part where the fly really starts to come to life. Pull the tails together and trim them so they are even. Unlike many flies, there is no correct length, and this can usually be left up to personal preference. Once you are satisfied with the length of the tail, repeat this step on the antenna as well. The legs can be a little tougher to trim. I like to get them all in a bunch, and then come with one hand from underneath, making certain not to stretch any of them. Then I cut them all even. Often, I will evaluate and repeat this step. Generally, it takes me two times to get at the length that I like.
Again, this fly is great for imitating stoneflies, which look like this. Try to get the proportions correct on the body and on the positioning of the antenna, tail, and the legs, but don't be afraid to leave any of them longer than the natural. I hope you found this video helpful. Please consider subscribing for more like it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I try to reply to all of them. Thanks for watching and tight lines.